Welcome to Creating a Farm Real Estate Owner's Manual, another offering in a series of Loranda instructional videos. My name is John Moss and today I'm going to discuss why it's imperative for farm owners to develop a handbook for each of their properties. To some, this idea may not seem that important, but take a minute to think about all the other items that you own that do have a manual. Cars, appliances, electronics. How many times have you referred to these guides when you have a problem or need additional information? A farm property is no different. Well, actually it is different because many farms today are worth well over a million dollars and yet many owners do not have all their pertinent materials consolidated in one place. In my 30 years in the real estate business, the typical landowner scenario that I've seen involves dad overseeing the property, but much of what is known about the parcel is in dad's head. And when something happens to dad, then mom or the next generation is left trying to figure out how to manage the farm without having any knowledge of what they are now in charge of. And sadly, this can lead to a situation where the tenant, a neighbor, or potential buyer can take advantage of them. And what's the best way to avoid this type of chaos? Create a manual that details everything that is known about the farm so that you become a confident, informed owner that can successfully oversee the land in the future. Now at this stage, you may be wondering what to include in your manual and how you should organize it. My suggestion would be to divide the material into three major sections as follows. Section 1. In this part of the handbook, you would include information that might be considered legal in nature, and the first item I would recommend is the legal description of the property. If you don't already have the exact legal, then you can visit the Recorder of Deeds office in the county courthouse or see if it is available online at the local government website. Next, a copy of a plat page showing the location of your farm within the context of the township would be helpful. Also in this section, I would include a copy of any survey that has been previously completed on the property, along with a detailed description of all the existing improvements. Copies of the real estate tax bills for the current year, the summary of the assessment values of the property, and a GIS map showing property boundaries would also be appropriate to include. Typically, a landowner is mailed these documents on an annual basis, but as a side note, I would encourage you to review them when received to make sure they are correct. Case in point, on many farms, older buildings are removed when they become dilapidated. However, unless you notify the assessor that they are no longer there, you will continue to pay taxes on them. Finally, the most current copies of all farm operating leases, mineral leases, easements, and other encumbrances should be placed in this part of your manual. Section 2. In this part of your guidebook, I would place all the information that pertains to the various government farm programs. At a minimum, this would include A, the FSA Form EZ-156, which shows a number of tillable acres along with the crop bases and payment yields that are used to determine any government program payments, B, the most recent FSA aerial photograph showing field sizes and boundaries, C, the signed documents and other materials for any government programs that are in place on the property, such as the Conservation Reserve Program or Wetlands Reserve Program, and D, the paperwork for any government cost-sharing projects, such as terraces or waterways that are currently encumbering the farm. Remember that government programs typically involve a contract with specific beginning and ending dates, so you will need to update this unit of the notebook on a regular basis as program details change. Section 3. In the final part of the manual, I would have any other relevant information that will help complete the picture of the property. Some of the best examples of these types of materials would include a map and summary of the soil types on the tillable acres, soil fertility tests, tile maps, and a yield history. Having detailed records of these four items can be quite valuable if you ever desire to sell the farm, renegotiate your lease, or perhaps find a new tenant. In a nutshell, it's this information that shows a prospective buyer or renter how productive your farm really is. Even if your land is leased under a cash rent arrangement, 
I would still recommend that you require your tenant to provide this information each year. Nearly all farmers have this data readily available, so all you need to do is ask. And if they aren't willing to provide it, then this may be the first sign that the tenant isn't caring for your farm as he should. Finally, in this section, I would add anything else that might be useful in the future, such as copies of any appraisals that have been completed on the track, a current copy of your insurance policy, a copy of the tenant's liability policy that has you named as an additional insured, and contact information for any vendors or other important people like the farm operator, the local fertilizer dealer, your local insurance agent, and any drainage or irrigation contractor that has done work on your farm in the past. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation and have learned more about the importance of creating a farmland owner's manual. If you didn't have time to make a list of all the different documents that should be included, you can download an overview of what was discussed by clicking on the link in the summary section below this video. Owning a farm can be quite enjoyable if you have an understanding of all its important characteristics. Future owners, whether that's your heirs or a third party, will also highly value and appreciate all the information you've gathered and consolidated over the years. Thanks for joining us today and good luck on your quest to become an organized and knowledgeable farmland owner.